Welcome to the Essential Guide for Record Store Day 2017. I'd like to say I know what I'm talking about because this is my seventh time between Record Store Day and Record Store Day Black Friday lining up overnight to get some crazy awesome records. In this video, I'm going to show you all sorts of tips and tricks and my picks for the Record Store Day list to make sure you have the most awesome Record Store Day ever. Twice a year my wallet takes an extra big hit because Record Store Day and Record Store Day Black Friday come around. Now, this Record Store Day is special because it's the 10th anniversary of Record Store Day. April 22nd, record fans all around the world are going to line up at their favorite local record stores to try to get titles that are coming out on a list specifically for this day. Some of these are records that have never been pressed before, some are first represses, some are special colored versions, limited versions, you name it. Every Record Store Day has an ambassador, some musician that puts their face to it. And this year is one of my favorite musicians, St. Vincent. I'm a little perturbed because there is no St. Vincent title on the list whatsoever. No single, no new LP announcement. I'm not quite sure why that's the case, because she's about due for a new album. So that really bummed me out. But life goes on. Annie Clark, I still love her. Record Store Day has unfortunately over the past few years gotten a little more commodified in the sense that a lot of records come out that are super limited, that cater to flippers that want to just buy them and immediately resell them on eBay, and that kills a little bit of the spirit of it, but I don't like to look at it like that. For me, I always like to build my collection with stuff that I'm really excited about on the list, I like to make friends while I'm in line, and most importantly, I like to support my local record store. Even if you don't like any of the records on the list, you should still go to your store and support it on Record Store Day. They usually have some kind of sale going on, an event of some kind, giveaways, Record stores love to embrace Record Store Day, and even if they don't get the titles that they asked for, they'll always do something awesome, so you should make sure that you call around and see what they're doing. This year, the list came out, and I was a little disappointed. Usually, there's one, two, maybe three items that I'm just jonesing for, and I know I have to line up at crazy hours to get. In the past, I've lined up at 10 p.m. the night before just to ensure that I get my pick of the one to two copies that a store might get of the rarest items on the list. In the past, some of these items have included the Record Store Day exclusive brand new Deja Entendu with the cutout cover, government plates by Death Grips with the Death license plate, and the Cake vinyl box set, which I've seen recently being asked for quadruple digits online, which is absolutely crazy. What's kind of nice is that there is no flippable item that I can tell right off the bat. There's no item that all the flippers are going to line up for just to make a quick buck. So they're probably scrambling to figure out how they're going to make their April money. But I know for myself, even though the list was overall somewhat lackluster, there are a lot of titles that I'm interested in. And depending on price, I'm going to hopefully pick them all up. So here's my tips on how to have a great record store day based on my experiences of the past six record store days. Number one, sit down, look at the list, and read through it. On the list, there's going to be three sections. There's going to be Record Store Day, there's going to be first releases, and there's going to be regional releases. So Record Store Day are the ones that are coming out in America on Record Store Day. Regional are going to be sometimes in America, but oftentimes just overseas. And first release means that your first chance to get it's on Record Store Day, but it will get a larger release later. So first things first, you're going to have to go check out the list. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can go check it out and see what records you want to pick up. Write them down. It's very important because you're going to have to refer to that later. As it gets closer, what I do is I tend to call my local record stores and find out if they got certain records in and how many of those records. Now, not every store is going to divulge that information because some like to keep it a little more secret, but the worst part of a record store day is that, let's say the most wanted record a store orders 20 of. There's a chance they might get three, two, sometimes even zero. So it's the worst feeling ever, I'm sure, to line up for seven hours in line and find out that they got zero copies of the number one record on your list. Once you've narrowed down the store that you want to go to, Make your list, prioritize it as to what you want, because I know certain stores do things where they'll take your list and they'll actually give you number one on your list, but the rest is kind of as is. That's what my favorite store does. So I always put my number one, the rarest and hardest to get at the top of the list, and the rest are just nice bonuses. And finally, once you've decided on the records you want and the store you're going to, plan your night. I love Record Store Day because it's a tradition for me in LA, and I always go and spend an exorbitant amount of time Sometimes, depending on how rare the rarest record on my list is, I will line up as early as 10 p.m. the night before, but I usually tend to get there between 2 and 4 in the morning. Stores tend to open around 10 to 11 a.m., so it's a nice hearty wait. Make sure you bring some snacks, bring some stuff to relax in, a nice lawn chair can go a long way, and be ready to make some friends and talk music with people, because I've met some really cool people in line at Record Store Day. If you wait till the end of the video, I'm going to give you some details about where I'm going to be this year, and I'm going to do an official Too Many Records Record Store Day 2017 meetup, which is going to be awesome. So let's dive into the list. 
I'm going to talk about the records that I'm hoping to get, depending on the price, and some of the stuff that I think is a little weird or that other people might be interested in. First up is a double 7-inch by Alice in Chains, just one of the greatest rock bands of all time. From what I gather, these are two 7-inches housed in a little mini gatefold jacket, which is actually very cool, and it's four tracks from the Lane Staley era, so the best era of Alice in Chains. This is going to be an absolute must-get for me. My man Andre 3000, one half of Outkast, is releasing a 7-inch. It's a cover of the Beatles all together now. I have no idea what that could possibly sound like, but he is one of my favorite rappers and musicians and people, so you know I'm going to buy that. Animal Collective is releasing a 10-inch record called Meeting of the Waters. It's live recordings that A.V. Terran Geologist did in 2016. It sounds like a lot of field recordings and a couple original songs. If it's cheap, I may pick it up because I have a pretty complete Animal Collective collection, but it's missing Panda Bear, who is my favorite member of Animal Collective, so it doesn't have quite the same draw for me. Maybe if I can hear the songs first, or at least a sample, that might coax me. The Cure is releasing two things on Record Store Day. They're doing Greatest Hits and Greatest Hits Acoustic Compilations. This would be fantastic, and I would obviously pick up both because the Cure stuff is kind of hard to find on vinyl, but they did it wrong. They're doing picture discs. I don't know why they're both picture discs. That sums it up pretty well. It's, you know, picture discs are not great sound most of the time, as you guys know. So I'm into the Cure because I like their music, not because I want to see Robert Smith's face plastered on my wall. So... I'm probably not going to pick it up, but if the price is right, I might grab the greatest hits because it actually has a really good flow front to back. It's not just mishmash songs. It's a very good compilation, first time on vinyl. So we'll see how that turns out. To continue steering into my grunge phase I'm going through right now, Marcy Playground's self-titled album, the one with I smell six and candy, yeah, the only song everyone knows by them, is coming out on vinyl for the first time. It's also coming with a bonus 7-inch with two covers, one of which is Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, covered popularly by Jeff Buckley and Rufus Wainwright. I have no idea what a Marcy Playground version of that is, but I'm intrigued. I'm going to pick this one up. Notorious B.I.G.'s Born Again is coming out on double gold discs. Now, a lot of people think that this is his worst compilation or worst release. I disagree. I subscribe to the belief that all of Biggie's releases are fantastic, and... Honestly, my favorite rap song of all time is on this compilation, Dead Wrong, featuring Biggie and Eminem. So how can you fight that? Neil Young has a three-disc greatest hits compilation called Decade. It's getting a reissue for Record Store Day. I don't own it, and I love Neil Young, so I'll probably pick this up because it's nice to have all of his tracks in one place. I saw Run the Jewels on the list, and I got super excited for a new release. Nope, it's just a tote bag. It's a limited edition Run the Jewels tote bag, but I love Run the Jewels, so I will probably buy it. Alt-rock emo band Sunny Day Real Estate's last album, The Rising Tide, has been out of print for a very long time, and it's getting a reissue on Record Store Day. I think for the real music fans who are really into this for cool reissues and great sounding albums are going to really go for this album because this is difficult to find, and it's widely revered as a fantastic emo rock, emo revival album. I think that 2500 worldwide is not that many, and it'll probably go fairly quickly in each store. So if you like this band, or if you're interested in emo or alt-rock, check it out, and probably add it to your list if you're smart. Super Furry Animals' first album, Fuzzy Logic, is getting a reissue. Now, this is kind of weirding me out, because I swear, like, a month ago, I saw some brand new pressing of Fuzzy Logic at Amoeba. I am not sure if that was an import, and this is just a US pressing. Not sure what the deal is, but I don't have it. Most of Super Furry Animals' albums are critically acclaimed and out of print. So this is their debut. It's a great album. If you don't know them, it's awesome, folky, psychedelic pop. And I recommend them. Check it out. And you should probably add it to your list if you like those genres. Everybody get up. It's time to slam now. We got a real jam going down. Welcome to the Space Jam. They're reissuing the Space Jam soundtrack on vinyl. Now, this sounds ridiculous, but it's actually a pretty damn good soundtrack. And it's high in demand. If you try to see this online, it'll go for 100 to $200 depending on condition. You might think, wow, that's cool, Matt, you have it already. I don't have it. This was a record I ordered my first year into collecting records from an online store, and I was super excited. I found it for like 25 bucks. The sleeve's a little beat, but besides that, the discs were supposed to be great. The discs were not different discs. They gave me both sides CD twice. It was some error. Some DJ must have made this like compilation accidentally in their crate, and you know... Side C and D are great. You got some R. Kelly, you got some Barry White, some Salt and Pepper, but side one is the best side. That's where you get the Space Jam song. Plus, I Believe I Can Fly by R. Kelly, which is arguably the best. Song. I believe I can. 
I think it's on colored vinyl, but I couldn't find exactly what it is. I'm guessing it's probably a blue and black mix based on the cover. But I'm probably going to pick up a copy because I want to have a full copy to play. This is just a cool little story, but I want, you know, the soundtrack to have forever. There's a Star Wars A New Hope release coming out, which is, you know, it's the 40th anniversary of one of the best films of all time from the best franchise of all time. And I don't know what this is. It's a 10 inch and it has two songs as the main theme and then the throne room end credits. I don't know if it's a picture disc. I don't know if it's colored. I'm probably going to buy it because it's Star Wars. And if you can see over there, I have so many Star Wars things in my room. It is out of control. Moving on to the regional releases that may or may not be in your local U.S. store. I'm really hoping some of these are because some of the regional releases this year are awesome. The Cinematic Orchestra's Moth Floor is getting its first repress in a long time. This has been on my want list for a while. This is a great jazzy down-tempo album. I recommend the Cinematic Orchestra to anybody that likes down-tempo electronic music. And this is arguably their best album. 800 copies worldwide on colored vinyl. This is going to be a hard one to get. If my store has it, this might be the one that's at the very top of my list. So, we'll see. UGK's first album, Too Hard to Swallow, is getting its first ever vinyl release. Kind of crazy to think that it was never on vinyl back in the 90s. It's on two clear discs. And I think this is going to be another one people are going to be scrambling for because UGK is one of the best rap groups to come out of the South. Fight me. And now first releases. Things coming out now, but we'll get a larger release down the road. Andre Nicotina's self-titled hip-hop album is coming out. Now, this never got a vinyl release up until now. Andre Nicotina is one of my favorite rappers from the Bay Area. I grew up in the Bay Area for 12 years, so I have a soft spot for some of that goofy, not super mainstream rap that came out of the Bay. And Andre Nicotina is one of my favorite of that genre. I don't know this album per se. A lot of his earlier albums aren't on vinyl either. I'm hoping this one does well because if it does, then the earlier stuff that I'm more familiar with can get some pressings and that would be great. I'm going to listen to this digitally and if it's good, I'll buy it. If not, meh. My new favorite obsession, Pearl Jam, is releasing a 7-inch record of one of my favorite songs in their whole catalog. If you listen to the podcast I just released, I talk about how this is arguably top 10 Pearl Jam songs of all time. I'm talking State of Love and Trust. This is getting a 7-inch release with the B-side being Breath. Both songs are great. 5,000 copies worldwide, it shouldn't be too hard to get, but knowing how big the Jamily is, we'll see. I might have to scramble for this one. Every year, the Vitamin String Quartet tends to put out some kind of release where they cover some sort of indie rock, or they've, they've done In Rainbows, they've done Modest Mounts Moon in Antarctica, they've done Daft Punk. This year, Vitamin String Quartet is actually covering Kanye West. I saw this, and most people are going to laugh at this and not buy it, their loss. I'm going to buy it. It's going to be awesome. So that's a really cool addition to the list. That's super random. I'd love to hear stuff with just a string quartet. That's going to be awesome. And these ones aren't interesting to me, but I feel like these could be interesting to you guys. So I want to share them with you. Miley Cyrus's recent album, Bangers, is getting a repress. Now, you might say, why? And I'm going to tell you, it's because it's been out of print and goes for almost $100. I don't love Miley Cyrus. I don't dislike her, but I don't really need to have any of her stuff on vinyl. If you've been looking for this though, this is now the time to grab it before it goes out of print again. A recent find that I got is being repressed and I'm a little bummed about it because it's not like it's something that everyone like needs to have and I feel like special holding on to it. It's just something that I thought was going to be a special thing that wouldn't ever get a repress and they're doing it. Toto's Africa has a shaped picture disc that looks like Africa and I found this at a store. It's pretty rare. I found it for I think 20 or 25 bucks. Goes for like $40, $50 if you can even find it. They're repressing it like exactly how it is. And I was like, all right, now everyone's going to have it. Mine's less special. But that's one of the best songs ever written. And if you don't have this picture disc, I think this is one worth having because just the shape of it's really cool and it's iconic. Just go for it. Whatever. I'll get over it. Dave Matthews Band is doing a four disc live at Red Rocks. I don't like Dave Matthews Band, but a lot of people do. And usually every record store day, there's some kind of Dave Matthews release or box set. Red Rocks is considered to be one of the best venues in potentially the whole world. So I think any Dave Matthews Band fan would probably want to pick this up. So if you are a fan, add this one to your list. And then usually there's some kind of crazy box set every record store day. Like I said, there was the Cake box set. There was the Red House Painters box set. There was the Lush box set. This year is a box set that I'm not super jazzed about, but maybe you will be. It's a Goo Goo Dolls box set. It's their first five albums, which stops just before what I think is their best album, which is Dizzy Up the Girl. All their other stuff is kind of hit or miss for me. I really liked them in high school, but I don't think I'd ever want to have their first five albums on vinyl. If you're a huge Goo Goo Dolls fan, I guess this is your chance because a lot of them have never been pressed before and this is the only way to get them on vinyl. This might be one the flippers try to flip and will fail at flipping, which will be hilarious. But if you like Goo Goo Dolls, this is the year for you. And then two WTF releases. I don't know why the record store plants get clogged up with this, but... 
Corey Feldman's Go For It featuring Snoop Dogg is being pressed for Record Store Day. I can't even say it with a straight face. Why would you ever purchase? Even even if you're into irony, I feel like you'd be like, this is a colossal waste of money. I don't know anyone that likes that song, let alone wanting to own it on vinyl. And then, of course, this essential release had to come out, you know. Record Store Day wouldn't be complete without Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Steam Rattle and Roll Thomas on blue Thomas the Tank Engine colored vinyl. Why? Who's purchasing this? Are you gonna buy this? If you if you're buying this, please leave a comment and tell me why. I I need to know. I want to know what you guys like from the record store day list. Are you happy with it? Are you not so happy with it? Please leave me a comment. Let me know what's gonna be on your list. What things you think are dumb that shouldn't have been on the list at all. And if you just want to talk about Saint Vincent, I'd love to chat about her as well. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I'm gonna be hopefully meeting up with some of you on record store day. I'm gonna tell you right now where I'm gonna be on April 22nd. Well. I might be there late the 21st, depending on what time I want to line up. I'm going to be at Amoeba Music in Hollywood, California. Where better to be on Record Store Day than my favorite record store? Just so happens to be the biggest record store in the U.S., too. Historically, they tend to have the most record store titles in all of California when it comes to trying to get the limited record that you want to get. That also tends to bring a lot of people to their line. So in the past, I haven't always gone. But this year, because there's nothing I'm absolutely gunning for that's a must-have, I think I'm going to go line up there and get to do the whole Amoeba experience. So I'm incredibly excited for that. And I'd love for you to be there too. If you want to come by, I'm going to be having an official Too Many Records meetup in the line for Amoeba, waiting for Record Store Day to begin. We can chat about music, talk about what you're looking forward to getting, and just hang. It's going to be a good time. If you plan on going, leave a comment and let me know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys April 22nd at Amoeba Music Hollywood. And we actually did get a chance to listen to this before. It sounds and looks great. Let's yeah. talk about the visuals. So these have a lot of variants. They mm -hmm. have like, I think, three or four.